Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about some of the changes that came in 0.15, the edition that came out uh, back in, I think it was September or October of this year, 2021, um, that I had, didn't have a chance to get through before they updated it into uh, 0.16. So we are using 0.16, but I am going back to one of the new features that was introduced in 0.15 that I talked about in that video. If you want to take a look at the changes in 0.16, I have a video on the channel for that for you. So you go check out those changes. There aren't going to be very many videos because many of the changes are in stuff that uh, I don't do and shouldn't tell people uh, what to do about them. <laughs> and so in any case, for this particular video, what we are going to do is the discussion of the reliability changes, the reliability module and the changes that were associated with 0.15. So some of the things that we are going to mess around with is we are going to be able to do, uh, you know, our typical intra-class correlation coefficients. Uh, tables now give more important information like means and standard deviations. Um, and, you know, uh, some things under the hood. It was a it was a uh, calculation that took a little bit more time with the way that the R code underneath it was structured. So that was cleaned up. So it would be um, a little bit faster. And then and then as well as under the hood kind of changes, the .jsap files that are created from these reliability analyses are smaller. So that's nice. Okay. So let's do one thing. Uh, let's open up some data and then we'll jump into the uh, reliability analysis. So let's open up the data library and let's find the, oops, uh, what happened to my categories? Hello, there they are. Let's open up the reliability module here. And um, I like doing the fear of statistics one um, just because it is um, easy to follow along with. And uh, it's just, it's a classic, it's a classic reliability analysis with one scale, multiple levels. Now, um, these two are from actual, so this, this is fictional data, as you can see from Andy Field. These other two, the ASRM mania scale is for Bayesian unidimensional reliability analysis, Nikolai and Mosshagen, um, or Mosshagen 2018 from a few years ago. And then inner rater data from Shrout and Fleiss 1979, um, classical intra-class correlations. So I might do that one. Actually, yeah, let's do that one since that was the major change. Classical intra-class correlation coefficients. So let's let's do that one. Inner data from Fleisch. So we have only six data. Um, I wish I could zoom in here. We have six cases, okay, six measurements, and we have one rater, two rater, three rater, four raters. Okay, and so we're gonna see whether or not they are consistent with one another. So what we need to do is we need to find our reliability analysis. And did they move it? Yes. Well, they didn't move it, it just got put over here. Now I'm trying to see. These are okay, so. <laughs> See, this is what Jasp is doing a little bit better here. We've got a scrolly bar, Jamovi. I mean, come on, we've got a scrolly bar. I can do it with either top scroll or side scroll on my mouse. And this is all in alphabetic order, except for the uh, R beta module, which you know, makes sense, right? It makes sense that that is. So, you know, and then it puts it in alphabetic order here because this is base Jamovi, descriptive C test Nova, mixed models, regression, frequency, and factor. But then we have everything else in, uh, hoo -hoo, in, uh, in alphabetic order. I love that. So anyways, we are going to do the reliability module. Again, you do need to add it uh, into your JASP if you haven't yet. All of these modules are in base Jamovi, but not activated unless you want them to be activated. So keep that in mind. It's different from how the package system works in Jamovi. All right, so we're going to go up to reliability, we're going to do that. And we are going to do interclass correlation. So unidimensional reliability is your Cronbach's alpha. Interclass correlation, on the other hand, is a different set of statistics. Okay. And the point estimate here is going to be our correlation for the class itself. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put all of these into our variables before we do anything. So don't look over here yet, because I do want to go through each of these options. Okay. So it's not, it's not that crazy, by the way. Um, so we're going to leave confidence interval at 95%, but you can turn this off and it'll get rid of these. And so this is, since this is a point estimate, we do have some uncertainty. So that is um, our 95% confidence interval. Now, each subject is rated by, um, now this is important to note because we don't, uh, because the interclass correlation is going to change based on how measurements were taken. Now, I'm just going to make a guess about this, although we could open the um, full wrapper for this particular data set. And I will see whether or not I'm right. I, I, I kind of want to, I kind of want to try. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so each participant is rated by either a different rater. So they were randomly selected, the same set of randomly selected raters or tests, the same fixed set of raters and tests. Now, this is interesting. And this is why you would use interclass correlation, because for this first option, which is on by default, a uh, different rater. So imagine if you were doing a test, uh, a, a observational test, a systematic observation of children playing in a uh, developmental lab. And so behind a one-way mirror, you had a group of raters, our four raters in this case, one, two, three, and four. And there were four children. And each raider got a one child to look at, okay, and follow along. Maybe they were measuring amounts of, or, or, or 
or counts of aggressive acts in a time period or something like that. And so that's what we have. We have four raiders, but we have six cases. So it's unlikely that a different raider was randomly selected to follow one case because that there's not a there's not a one to one ratio here. Uh, so it's unlikely that's the case. But that is how that could be. Four raiders, four kids, one raiders watching one kid each. A same set of randomly selected raiders and tests. Now, this one would be as if you know, people, eyes were looking back and forth. That could be uh, so a raider looks at multiple children in this setting. That could be. Uh, it, it it might be po it might be that case you know just whoever you're looking at as your eyes are scanning the um, children for aggressive acts maybe something like that uh, so that could be it and the same fixed set of raiders uh, or tests so that would be uh, if the every raider looked at every participant right so all four of these raiders rated all of these and that seems to be the case here uh, I'm gonna go with that one and we'll see whether or not we're right um, and you can see that it's quite a difference between different raider and same fix because the point estimate on the previous one as you can see is 0.166 and that is a very very low interclass correlation so an unlikely right and you can see here that six subjects and four judges measurements okay mm, i don't think so so here if we change this um we have type three one and if you want to know what the types are you would go to shroud and slice although the rapper might have these descriptions for us and then um we have a checkbox here of ratings are average i don't think in this small set of a data, this uh, 24 uh, data data set um, that the ratings are average, but you can see what happens if they are average. That means our point estimate gets much higher. In this case, they would have been rated once by the reviewers themselves, and so that's why this changes from 3.1 to 3K, right? We can see here 3.1, 3K. Uh, I don't think that's the case. So it looks like our point estimate for interclass correlation is 0.715. Not bad, not bad. So what I want to do then is I want to open the full wrapper for this and see how we did. So we go back into reliability and we are going to open the JASP file and see what we did. Um, wrong button. There we go. Let's make a full screen. Okay. Yeah. I was right. Look at that. It's uh, I, it's interclass correlation 3-1. Oh, yeah, buddy. So hypothetical data set from a paper on ICCs by Shrout and Fleiss. We assume six subjects have been rated by four raters. The scale is unfortunately unknown. <laughs> unfortunately, because it's a fake scale, right? So Raider 1, Raider, uh, ratings of Raider, number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4. Those are the variables. This example demonstrates the use of classical interclass correlation coefficient to estimate the estimate agreement between Raiders. Here, we assume that all subjects have been rated by the same fixed set of Raiders. Boom, right there. And so this is the Shrout and Fleiss 79 paper. We would like to know the agreement between the Raiders. We assume all subjects has been rated by the same fixed set of Raiders, right? Interclass correlation 3, 1. The agreement is fairly good. ICC equals 7, uh, 0.715. However, the confidence limits indicate that there is a huge uncertainty associated with estimation, meaning the actual agreement could be much higher or lower. And that's because we only have six subjects and four judges. We have 24 data points, and that's about it. So be because we only have 24 data points in this ICC, we have a huge swath of uncertainty here. And that, and that would come across in a graf graphical representation of this point estimate. So that is the classical interclass correlations that have been added to 0 0.15. So that is amazing. Um, now, the additional change, um, let's go to, let's go, uh, let's go open to reliability. This one here, let's just put these all in. Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be a weird um, McDonald's W here. McDonald's W, uh, excuse me, not W, Omega uh, is the default, but you can get Chromebacks Alpha. You can get Gutman's Lambda 2, Gutman's Lambda 6, uh, lower bound, average interim, average inter item correlation. There we go. But here is the new addition, the means and standard deviations for that. And then as well as the individual item statistics, means and standard deviations for Raiders 1, 2, 3, and 4. So those are the new changes to the reliability module in 0 0.15, carried over, of course, to 0 0.16. That's how you do it. If you like this video, consider leaving a like. If you like this content, consider subscribing for more of these kinds of tutorials. Thank you for watching. Bye.